do indeed. We have been enveloped by the herd. It is quite spectacular. We are sitting amongst hundreds of buffalo right in the middle of them. They've come around us in all sides now, and it really is such a beautiful scene. We're in this magical area. The grass is really long, but they are the most beautiful trees. So if we look southwards to my right-hand side, it is such a pretty scene. All of the buffalo in this area with these massive trees, it really is spectacular. And when you're sitting amongst them, there's just this aura and this feeling. You hear them their grunts, you can hear them feeding as they're moving around. It really is really, really special to be in amongst a herd like this. Now I was hoping they were going to go towards the dam, but it seems like they might actually miss it. They're almost angling away from it slightly, which is not ideal. So I'm hoping that they will start making their way a little bit further to the east, and then they'll go right towards Buff Dam. But you can see they've even come across on this side. They're on our left-hand side. There's just buffalo everywhere. It's been so nice to have them back again. Like I say, we don't see, we haven't seen too many of them during the summer, so to have big herds of buffalo is always spectacular. There's something about being with them that really makes me feel alive and as though there's something about to happen at any stage. Now I'm sure these buffalo come from the Kruger side because they are, are not that relaxed. They tend to be a little bit more skittish. <laughs> so, Jonathan, who's eight years old, you're wondering if a buffalo is like a normal cow. Well, no. A buffalo is a lot more aggressive than a normal cow, and they are something you don't want to really get too close to on foot. On a vehicle, they're not too bad. They kind of have become used to the fact that vehicles move around, and they don't see us as a threat. But this is one of the most dangerous animals in the African bush if we're on foot. They really can be very, very, very aggressive. But they do look quite like cows, and they have the same stomach system as a cow, and they often if look and sort of feed and behave like cows but they are a lot more aggressive and not something that you want to treat like a cow they definitely have a nasty side to them but i'm going to go a little bit further forward now because it looks like they may be just starting to get towards the water so vanessa from la you're wondering whether a buffalo can get a twisted stomach like a cow can. Well, imagine it, I would imagine it is possible. The thing is, though, is any animal out here, a lot of the time, especially with buffaloes, we actually don't know what the natural cause may have been because lions or hyenas or vultures get into them before we even get a chance to know what's going on. So any buffalo that dies is going to be a huge food source for a number of other animals, and so generally we're not sure. But I would imagine if we go and investigate and we go and look up things and especially in veterinary journals we'll find that I'm sh buffalo probably have the same things and, and also get a twisted stomach much like you would see with a cow but you can see they are slowly going that direction so Debbie you're asking whether water buffalo moo well firstly these are not water buffalo so water buffalo is an animal that occurs in Asia and also in Australia it does look similar but it is not the same thing this is a Cape or African buffalo and these guys are far 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 more aggressive than the water buffalo but back to the mooing part I have never heard them moo but they do make lots of grunts that are very similar to cows um, and they make these kind of bellows that I suppose could be determined as a different kind of moo but they don't moo like a normal cow would that's for sure but you can see how alert they are in this long grass we so William you want to listen to them grazing all around us so I'm going to sit still and not say too much more and we'll turn the mic up and we'll listen to this herd feeding all around us The other nice thing about being in a herd like this is not only the movement of their feet that kind of gives you the noise, but there's always ox peckers and so they chattering away too, and then there's the sounds of the morning. So it really is spectacular just to stop and listen and hear them. 
Hopefully they will start coming closer to back towards us from the back and we'll start to hear them a bit more and when they do I'll stop talking again. So Megan, the buffalo do have a odour very similar to cows but their dung smells very similar so they have that same sort of grassy dung smell but they don't stink as much as cows but I think that's because cows tend to spend a lot more time in the same areas and so the smell gets a lot more pungent with buffalo they kind of transition through an area and they don't really make um, stay in one place all, all too often and so you don't end up with that smell developing in the same area but yes they do have a smell very similar to cows so I didn't catch the full name there, Alice, I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit, but I heard Grandpa and Sailing, I didn't hear the middle part. So, ah, Grandpa's farm goes sailing. Well, yes, these buffalo are magnificent beasts. It's quite incredible to sit in amongst them and just, like I say, absorb the presence that they have. They really do have a lot of sort of character about them and they tend to be sort of very kind of grumpy animals and sitting in amongst them and listening to them sort of bellow at each other and fight with one another and the ox pickers that are busy all over them it is quite special being in a herd of buffalo I remember the first time I ever saw a big herd of buffalo it was down in the southern parts of the Sabi Sands and there was about 800 in that herd and you just got in amongst them and there was just this movement all around you and obviously we know that buffalo can be a very dangerous animal so it seems like a silly thing to be doing sitting in amongst them but it really is quite a special feeling and one that you become quite addicted to by being in around this dangerous animal and just lots of them all moving in unison around you it's quite a spectacular thing now I just want to turn because the picture behind me is really really good so I'm just going to quickly turn the vehicle so that Senzo doesn't have to deal with our antenna and our pole it comes off the back Senzo I think this is going to be a lot better for you Let's just make sure we don't drive into the big knob thorn tree. How's that? So, Michael, I'm uh, wondering how they decide where to go and whether or not there is a leader amongst the herd. Well, there will be older males and females that tend to be in the front and they will tend to dictate the direction that the herd goes. So they normally sort of hire uh, older members. They're not necessarily matriarchs or dominant males, but they're just more experienced animals that know where water is, know where good grazing is, and where there's safe areas that they can sort of negotiate and try and minimize the risk of lions and varying other predators so they tend to be at the front of the herd and they'll then drag the herd with them and you'll find that all the younger females and young animals in the middle and then at the back again will be some of the older bulls just to protect the herd so that's how it really works but there's no matriarch or dominant individual of the herd it's it's just older more experienced uh, animals that lead the herd and take them to where they need to go but I'm going to just try and keep a little bit. So Dana, all the way from Philadelphia, welcome Dana. I hope you are having a lovely day and that you're enjoying these buffalo. And you're wondering now that the buffalo are back, will the lions be back? Well, yes, as we get bigger herds like this, the lions are going to start coming into the area. So I'm going to stop speaking for a little bit and I'll explain why just now. But if we listen, all right, so you hear the movement of grass as well as those low grunts. Buffalo make a lot of noise. Now, when you're a lion and you hear this in the distance, immediately you know that that is a food item that could potentially be utilized. And so we, when lions see herds of buffalo like this or hear herds of buffalo like this, they definitely come into the area and try start hunting them. So it is going to attract 
lions definitely um, but a herd like this is going to just bypass it's not going to stay around in this area it's just the first sort of rolling herd that we're going to get and as we get into the winter months so they become more frequent in the area and then yes the lions will be behind them and will be looking for food so even with this herd it's always a good idea once you've seen these animals like this is to loop around the back of the herd and go and check where they've come from and often you do find lions just patrolling behind them and kind of trying to catch up with the herd so they will be around and the Inkahumas and Torchwood Pride and Styx Pride this is exactly what they would want to see they would want to see the backs of these buffalo in the distance and know that that's now that they're back and that food items are going to be around again the other thing is is that the buffalo even in herds like this you can see there are one or two weaker ones so there's one in the middle here it's got its hips showing there it goes it's just walking off frame now at the back there with the ox peck on it so you can see there that animal its ribs are showing a little bit to the left Senzo to the left other way there we go the one with the bird on its back so you can see there the ribs are showing already the hips so when winter comes it's going to be a lot harder for this animal to gain nutrition and so it should get weaker and thinner and that's what the lions are looking for when they look into herds like this they know that instead of coming across a bull um, buffalo on his own that's going to be aggressive that's really got a lot of muscular structure they can come across these weaker individuals in the herd that are not as powerful and take them on instead so that's why lions target buffalo herds like this also as we saw just now there's the pregnant these pregnant animals that are going to give birth and those are a lot easier to catch than the adults so Tony you're wondering if a buffalo gives birth will it move away from the herd well no Tony um, buffalo are quite funny animals they'll just give birth right next to the herd and the reason why they do that is because they know if they give birth away from the herd they are then v seriously increasing the amount of danger that they're in because any lion that comes across a buffalo on its own is going to hunt it particularly a female females are not nearly as strong as what the males are and they also have this tiny little calf with them that they need to protect so they give birth in amongst the herd and the little buffalo is standing within five ten minutes it's already wobbly on its feet and by about half an hour it's able to keep up with the herd really not badly at all it can, can just walk in and it will stay with the herd so they stay within it so that they can be protected by all these big old males that are hanging around on the peripheries and on the edges now on Juma recently we've been seeing a female with one male and so she's obviously latched onto that male while she's got this car for protection I haven't seen any calves yet um, it's not to say there aren't any the herd seems to just keep coming you can see there's just waves of them coming through this area um, but no I haven't seen any calves just yet it was a very hard year last year for the calves with all the with the lack of food that we had a lot of the females aborted and they gave birth to stillborns and also just lost the the, the young ones before they had even formed um, because of the lack of nutrition and so very few calves were actually born last year so as far as I can see now, no calves at this stage, but there are quite a few pregnant females in this group, so I'm sure we'll see calves in the next few months from these buffalo. But Michael, you were asking earlier about the difference between the males and females, so if you have a look in the middle here, there's a male there, so that's what the male looks like. So there's the male and then a female in front. So you can see the difference between the two. The male's got that thick helmet-like structure. So now I can at least show you a lot better. So I hope that helps, Michael. Donald, you're asking, is this a reserve or is this the wild? Well, this is as wild as it gets. These buffalo are not fed. They're not looked after. They don't have to um, deal with any human contact. The only thing is they just see our vehicles. Now, the reason why we can get in amongst them and be in this area and they can be so relaxed is because this vehicle poses no threat to this buffalo we are not shooting these animals we are not trying to hurt them we don't chase them we don't steal food from them we don't hurt their calves and so they've become used to the cars as just another almost like another member of the herd so we're not a threat to them they know that we're just something that moves around and really isn't something that they have to worry about in fact we could almost look at it as though we're another animal out here and they know that we're not a predator and therefore they don't mind us 
being here. But if I had to get out on foot, it would be a very, very, very different scenario. These animals on foot would be far more aggressive. And if I was standing where I am now, I probably wouldn't even be standing. I would be dead at this stage. So it is indeed very wild in this area. This has always been a wildlife area. We've had animals here throughout its existence. And so these animals have never been put here or trained or anything like that. They are as wild as it gets. It's just that we're very, very lucky that animals, unlike people, are far more trusting until we give them a reason not to be. But isn't this spectacular? You can see the little oxpecker here as well. We've got a nice view of this oxpecker. I hope this bush is not going to sh chase it away. But generally the oxpeckers are quite far away. But isn't that nice? Beautiful. So, Laurie, now that we're actually showing you an oxpecker, it's good timing. You're wondering whether oxpeckers stay with the herd or they fly back to their nest. Well, they do fly back to their nest, so they don't stay with the herd all the time. But once the little ones are, are big enough to fly, they actually then do stick with the herd. So if we go to the buffalo in front of this one with that oxpecker, there is actually a juvenile sitting with its... There we go, there's the two young ones. So you can see they've got the dark beaks. So they would have come out of the nest now and they'll now travel with the adults. And on a herd like this, they pretty much try and stay with it as much as possible until they get too far from their nesting area that they have to then come back. The reason why they'll stay with the herd like this is because of the amount of food that they're going to get out of this. There's going to be so much nutrients on all of these buffalo that these guys will be sitting very, very close and trying to utilize each animal as they move around. So um, they do spend most of the day with the herd but they will fly back to their nests when they need to but we're going to carry on because we're being left behind now and these buffalo are starting to move away from us so I want to try and just get forward now I'm surprised that they haven't gone for a drink like I was saying earlier buffalo tend to be animals that are very water dependent but these guys seem to be walking straight past this dam I wonder if maybe the water isn't up to their standards although I've seen buffalo drinking horrific stuff before they often do drink horrible water. They're not too fussy when it comes to water. It's not like elephants. Elephants tend to prefer nice clean water. But let's see, maybe they're just coming around and feeding and then they'll come down to the dam as they go. Now, as we follow these buffalo and try and see whether or not they're going to drink, I believe Taylor is standing next to a pan and let's see what she's got to show us. <laughs> 